Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about USB 3.1, including an overview of the specification and connectors, fitting a USB 3.1 card into a desktop PC, and conducting a comparative speed test. USB 3.1 is an upgrade of USB 3.0, and offers a top potential data transfer speed of 10 gigabits per second compared to 5 gigabits per second for USB 3.0 and 480 megabits a second for USB 2.0. USB 3.1 can also deliver up to 5 amps of power at up to 20 volts. Turning to the hardware, the Type A USB 3.1 connector is identical to that for USB 3.0 with full backwards compatibility with USB 2.0. While no official colour has been assigned for the insert, some manufacturers, including ASUS, have adopted a light or teal blue to identify USB 3.1. Turning to micro connectors, here we've got a USB 2.0 micro B connector, a USB 3.0 micro B connector with its extra pins, and also the new USB 3.1 Type-C connector, or USB-C. And the really interesting thing about this connector is not only that it's smaller, which makes manufacturers of tablets and smartphones happy, but it's a reversible connector. This means you can actually insert a USB Type-C connector either way around, and it still works perfectly well. Right, if you want to add USB 3.1 to an existing desktop PC, you're going to need something like this. This is a USB 3.1, it says it down there, uh, and indeed up here as well, USB 3.1 PCIe card, which happens to come from our happy friend AS Rock, who made this particular one. If we have a look inside, always good to unbox something, isn't it? Not a lot in here, just obviously the card, always a little, one of those mini driver discs, may or may not need that on the modern operating system. If we open this thing up, oh, it's got some tape. There we are. Lots of good crackly noise. Oh, and it's stuck. There we are, look. This is our uh, USB 3.1 card. You can see down there it's got its uh, USB 3.1 socket, an A type and a C type. And so what I'm going to do is to take this and I'm going to fit it into my test rig, which is all a uh, Waiting here, you can see it's got a free PCIe 4 times slot. So I can take our USB 3.1 card and hopefully I can get it right, line it up right. Please go in, there it is, that's going to go in absolutely fine. So what I need to do now, yes it has, just need to put a screw in here. And as I've said to you before, I have great problems with the screws on this particular case and also dropping the things as well. Use your magnetic screwdriver, you fool. So I'll get this in, put this in here. Then once this has gone in, all I need to do is to uh, reboot the PC. And here we are by the magic of filmmaking back in Windows. And if I just go to uh, this PC, uh, bring up properties, uh, bring up the device manager, we should find hopefully under universal serial bus controllers where, oh, there we are, look, uh, AS Media USB 3.1 extensible controller. And if we do properties on that, um, it is working properly. So I didn't need to install any drivers, it's all been picked up and it's working marvellously well. So there we are, I've now got two USB 3.1 ports on the back of my test rig. And I can even prove it's possible to take a USB 3.1C connector, connect it one way around, goes in absolutely perfectly, but I can also pull it out and move it round and it'll also go in the other way around. Isn't that amazing? But what would be even more amazing if I now did some comparative speed tests. Right, to do some uh, speed tests, I've got myself another new piece of kit, which is this, which is a USB 3.1 to SATA adapter. So if we open this thing up, that hopefully just slides, it does, and it's got to, oh, got a shiny logo on top. If we open up the box, here we are inside a fairly standard piece of equipment. Just take off the um, twisty thing there, get to it properly, and uh, it's a, uh, oh, very good look, look, so long a cable, it goes off screen. But basically, what we have here is USB 
on one end and a SATA connector on the other. So what I'm going to do is to take this SATA drive. This is a new Samsung Evo drive. And I'll connect this to um, the device with the connector there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to connect this in turn to the USB 3.1. USB 3.0 and the USB 2.0 connectors on my test rig. And what I'm going to do is to transfer three gigabytes of large files to uh, this SSD, which is a Samsung 850 Pro connected directly by SATA to the test rig's motherboard. Now, I should say even copying files from SSD to uh, SSD will not saturate the theoretical speed of USB 3.1, 10 gigabits a second, um, but it's the fastest test I can think of. And to be honest, if the test copying from SSD to SSD doesn't show any differences between USB 3.1 and 3.0, then really it's not worth having USB 3.1 at the moment. So that's the test we're gonna do. Let's see how it works in practice. And here they go. Uh, USB 3.1 at the top is clearly going to win over USB 3.0 beneath it, but not by that much of a margin, it seems. Uh, what's it going to be? 13.0 uh, seconds for USB 3.1 compared to, what, 15.8 for USB 3.0. So we save just under three seconds when we're transferring three gigabytes of large files between two uh, SSDs. Now, as you can see, the uh, total transfer time gave us a 238 megabyte a second transfer rate for USB 3.1 compared to 196 megabytes a second for USB 3.0. We can also here compare the uh, maximum transfer speed obtained which was 261 megabytes a second for USB 3.1 and uh, 201 megabytes a second for USB 3.0. So in terms of a total test here, USB 3.1 was about 21.5% faster, but if we look at the maximum transfer rate obtained, it was about 30% faster. Now, of course, as we can see, USB 2.0 isn't as fast, it's crawling along the bottom there, so we'll allow that to uh, speed on a bit. And uh, here we are, USB 2.0 coming in just under two minutes at a 26 megabytes a second. Right now, and as our test has shown, most of the hardware is yet to catch up with the speed potential of USB 3.1. Most of the attention is therefore focused on the new reversible Type-C connector and the ability to deliver up to 100 watts of power through this tiny plug. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.